Hello, Algebra 1. This is your Simplifying Rational Expressions Guided Practice Problem Set. So these GPs will be collected tomorrow as part of your homework assignment for this evening. So here's GP number 1. What I would like you to do is to copy the problem down, then hit pause on the video and try to simplify the expression on your own. So this is GP number 1 x squared minus 2x minus 8, which is a trinomial, divided by x minus 4. So the solution to this, x squared minus 2x minus 8, since a is equal to 1, it's relatively simple to factor. It's the easiest one that we talked about in class. You know that your pq has to be 8, so find out factors of 8 um, when subtracted from each other will equal negative 2. And the reason that subtracted is to have a negative 8 for my C term and a negative, a minus minus situation, you're going to have to have a plus minus for your binomials when you factor that out. Erase those so that's not going to be confusing for us. Okay, so we're back to trying to factor this out. I have 8, so I have 1 and 8, and I have 2 and 4. Well, 8 minus 1 is 7, and 4 minus 2 is 2. My B term is 2, so that's the situation I want. I want my larger number to be negative and my smaller to be positive. So reason went over that pretty quickly with you. That was benchmark number six, where we were practicing how to um, factor quadratics. Down here at the bottom, I have my x minus 4. Now here's a quick hint for you, word to the wise, is that when you are simplifying rationals, um, oftentimes, if you have um, a term by itself on the denominator, that will probably be one of your factors. Okay, so that's just a quick hint when you're simplifying rationals. Um, that way, um, you, you, have, you have a target. You have something that you're looking for. So I have my x minus 4. That cancels out my x minus 4 on my denominator, and that gives us a final answer of just x plus 2. All right, if you need to copy that down, go ahead and take a moment to copy it down. Hit pause on the video. Otherwise, we're going to do GP number 2. So GP number two, go ahead and take a moment, please, to write this problem out. I'd like you to do your best to try to factor this particular problem um, so that you can simplify. And then hit play on the video if you're stuck so you can try to figure out how to, um, how to simplify. So go ahead and take a moment, please. Pause the video. Try it on your own. So proceeding with this, I have 10x minus 5. Um, I know I could definitely factor out a 5, which gives me, um, excuse me, which gives me a 2x minus 1 for my numerator. Looking at my denominator, I have a 1 minus 2x. And we talked about that minus sign in this class. We said, well, if we take out the minus sign, if we take out a negative 1, that gives us negative 1 plus 2x, which is the same thing as... I'm going to go and write underneath. 5 times 2x minus 1 is my numerator, and my denominator is negative 1 times 2x minus 1. You'll notice we did a switcheroo here. I took this, I moved it over there. I took this negative sign, I moved it over here. Um, and the reason is I want my x to be positive, and my second term needs to be negative in order to match what I have up here on the numerator. Okay, um, the reason I want it to match is that if I have a 2x minus 1 on the top, I can then cancel out that 2x minus 1 on the bottom. Now, you might recall in class I said you can't cancel things out unless there's a multiplication symbol. If there's plus and minus signs, you cannot. In this case, we can cancel out because your multiplication symbol is out here. And it's everything inside the parentheses, including that minus sign, is being, is being removed. Okay, all of it, the whole thing. So if that's part of the lump sum, you can go ahead and cancel that out. I'm just going to go ahead and clear that out. So when you simplify this, you actually, on this particular problem, you actually lose your variable. So this, the simplification here is actually just negative 5. There's no more variable involved. If you need to continue copying that down, go for it. Otherwise, the video will play on to GP3. So here's GP number three. I'd like you to take a moment, please, and try to do one of these, um, 
one of these opposite type problems. Here's um, y squared plus 3y minus 28 over 16 minus y squared. So take a moment, please, try to factor that out so you can cancel stuff out. And by canceling here, therefore, simplifying these rationals. So the solution to this, taking a look at that numerator, you do have a quadratic in standard form. It's a trinomial. There's an a, b, and c term. a is equal to 1. I see that my pq is equal to 28, and it's a plus-minus situation, which means we'll have a plus-minus binomial. The only way to get a negative c is if you have a plus-minus. Um, I see that I have a 28, so factors of 28 are 1 and 28. Too big, won't work out so well. 214, again, still too big. You have your 4, 7. That will definitely work. You subtract them. 7 minus 4 is 3. And I want my larger number to be positive, And that will give me a positive 3 for my B term. Uh, down at the bottom, I have 16 minus y squared. Again, if you take out a negative 1, you'll actually have a y squared minus 16. Now you'll see down here why that's going to be helpful for us. I'm going to rewrite the numerator. We've already factored that out. That's a y plus 7 and a y minus 4. Um, on the denominator, I have a negative 1, and I can factor a y squared minus 16, and in class, you might remember me saying, this is a difference of two squares. So y squared has a 1 up front, 1 can be square rooted, and 16 can be square rooted. So there's your difference of two squares. All of this. Okay, so the fact that it's a difference of two squares means I take the square root of y squared, I take the square root of 16, and I throw in a plus and a minus. If you're unsure, you definitely can oi it to double check to make sure you have the correct um, factors. All right, so let's go ahead and proceed here, finish the problem off. I'm going to use my, uh, my big marker here and show my giant 1. I have a y minus 4 on the top, a y minus 4 on the bottom. That gives me y plus 7 over y plus 4, and the whole thing is going to be negative. Negative y plus 7 over y plus 4. Okay, so there goes the solution to GP number 3. Looks like we have some time to do a fourth GP, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a fourth problem to try out. So here's GP number four. GP number four looks like this. So we have x to the third power plus 9x squared plus 14x, all of that over x squared minus 4. So just like solving a puzzle, you want to be able to simplify this. You can't just randomly cross things out. Things need to be factored out in order to be simplified. The first thing I need to do here is to factor out an x from my numerator. On my denominator, I see a difference of two squares again. So that gives me x plus 2 times x minus 2. Not quite done yet. I still have that trinomial up top that can be factored out. Okay, so I'm going to have an x and an x. I see that my pq is going to be 14. Let me write that a little neater there. There's my 14. So that's 1, 14, that's 2, 7. I see a plus plus, so this will be a plus plus as well. Which means instead of subtracting, you're going to be adding 14 plus 1 is 15. That doesn't work out so well. 7 plus 2 is 9. That's the situation I want. And that's a really good thing because I happen to have an x plus 2 on the denominator to create my cross out. There's my giant 1. When I simplify and I cross that out, I have x times x plus 7 over x minus 2. Notice on the denominator, I did not write that set of parentheses because there's nothing being multiplied it by anymore. I still need to write the parentheses on the numerator to indicate that multiplication there. Nothing else can be reduced. All right, that's it for now. Make sure you're ready to turn in these four GPs tomorrow. See you in class.